So there I was, making resources for you guys, and then all of a sudden Blender 3.2 released. Now this isn't a particularly big update, especially when compared to some of the previous ones, but you know the drill, whenever there's a major version we'll do a video where we sit down, look through the release page and just talk about the new features so I can bring you up to speed. So that's what we're going to do, welcome to Blender 3.2. So there's always some kind of tagline to go along with these updates. So for 3.0, it was a new era for content creation. For 3.1, it was think quick because this was mostly about like speed and performance improvements. For this one, it's reach new lights. That's because uh, light grouping is one of the main features here. So Blender 3.2 is in master now. If you go to the website, you'll be able to download it. If I click to download now, you'll see it there on the main page, the freedom to create Blender 3.2. This update contains light groups, shadow core sticks, volume motion blur, collection assets, and much more. Let's take a look at it in more detail. So so the Blender Foundation and the online developer community are proud to present Blender 3.2, unleash your creativity with new rendering features, painting tools, performance improvements and much more. So on this page you'll see a quick under 5 minute breakdown from Sub and Shotty, friend of the channel. They do these update videos on the official Blender channel on YouTube to kind of give people a nice introduction. Scrolling down we'll see the first major feature, light groups. Now this is something that people have been requesting for a long time in cycles, because it provides so much flexibility over the lighting. Basically you can render once and then control the lighting in all sorts of different Different ways so you don't have to keep re-rendering for every change you make so we can see that here light groups can be used in order to example modify the color and or intensity of light sources in the compositor without re-rendering so for a demonstration of that here you can see all light groups combined in the compositor for this image here it looks very nice a lovely architectural visualization render so this is the combined render with every light source but we can choose the different individual groups here so interior pool benches and world so combining all of these together we will get the final Final result. So light groups allow for just a wide range of flexibility for like post processing and just essentially allow you to have much more artistic control over the influence of light over your scene. The next thing which I think is really cool is shadow core sticks. So Cycles now supports selective rendering of core sticks in shadows of refractive objects. This is based on manifold next event estimation, a method developed for production rendering. So we can see the before and after slider here and this isn't actually a very good demonstration for showing it off. You'll notice it here here at the bottom there do you see where those shadows are coming in from the shape of the glass i actually have a better demonstration which someone on twitter did um let me just bring that up so this is from dr michael douglas and this is a much clearer demonstration of the difference so you can see here with blender 3.1 we're not getting many kind of caustic shadows going on despite the shape of this glass being kind of all concave and convexy like it's got a wave pattern going around it but in blender 3.2 this is much more representative of the actual shape so we have proper caustics going on so that's very interesting very useful for artistic effects relying on kind of transparent materials. Scrolling down we have volume motion blur, introducing support for motion blur for gas simulations and imported open VDB volumes. I imagine this one's going to be super interesting for kind of motion graphics artists and all sorts of people doing visual effects especially when they're importing open VDBs from other software. I imagine Houdini artists might find this especially interesting. Now if you take a look at the demonstration on this page it might be difficult to see through the compression of this video on YouTube how However, the motion blur kind of helps to sell the realism a bit because it smooths things out between the frames. So scrolling down from there, what else have we got for cycles? Support adaptive sampling with scrambling distance, AMD GP rendering for Linux or Linux, open color IO color space aliases support, new linear ACES CG color space, so basically just new color options, add alpha output to object info node, that could be quite handy, support different color management for render and viewport, that sounds interesting. I never really considered using different ones for the viewport and render automatically unpause viewport when switching to rendered mode, enable Alembic procedural for final renders, and support baking to UDIM tiles, that's going to be handy for production pipelines. And of course if you want you can click on any one of these updates and it will show you the development task and because Blender is an open source project they're very transparent about the development process. Alright next section, color me impressed. Blender 3.2 revolutionizes polygon painting with new tools, usability improvements and unprecedented performance. So as we alluded to in my paint mode preview video, talking about the upcoming paint mode for Blender, there's more of a focus moving on to the texture painting side of things, which I think a lot of people are going to be happy about. So it makes sense that we're starting to see some improvements in that regard with these updates, but there's still a lot more to come. So paint it back. Paint mode is now available in sculpt mode. Taking advantage of the performance improvements, you can now paint on millions of polygons. Check out the file used in the video below. So let's take a look here. 
The new paintbrush comes with a bunch of new settings like tip shape, wet mixing, flow and density, customize the brush freely with all the existing settings. So you can watch that here and see while they are in sculpt mode, they can paint directly onto the objects with all the brush settings down there on the right. There's also a smear brush, a new high performance smear brush with modes for smear dragging, pinch and expand. So let's play that, have a quick look works very nicely. Then we have mask by color. Create masks on the fly with the new mask by color tool. It's perfect to paint or sculpt on certain colors only. Okay, so you can see here how they're building up the mask by the color selected, and then they can paint over just what remains. So I think that's pretty cool. Then there's also a color filter tool. So a new color filter tool to apply various effects on unmasked areas. Adjust the hue, values, saturation, contrast, or even smooth. So let's take a look at that. So they're changing the hue there. And if we check the top there on the top left, there's a filter type so as they're clicking and dragging they're essentially applying that filter to the image so let's take a look there's the contrast one increasing and decreasing then the smooth one dragging making it more and more smooth so these are quite handy tools for the painting inside of the sculpt mode i think people will have fun with that next up we have remeshing which is an extremely handy tool now when using the voxel remesher all color attributes will be preserved so it's not going to be destroying color data now this is perfect to color your sculpts as you still experiment and block out the general shapes super handy Mask out. Masking, auto masking and face sets are fully supported with color attribute painting. So there is consistency between the tools and they work well together. Next up we have an addition to geometry nodes. So like I said, this update is not huge. So there aren't any kind of amazing like revolutionary things that have been added to geometry nodes, but we do have the duplicate elements node. This new node creates a new geometry with the specified elements, point, edge, face, spline or instance. Combined with the geometry to instance node, this can be used to create a basic efficient array operation. This should be more efficient because the duplicates are instances. So we can click through and have a look at the wiki page for this node to take a look at examples of how to use it. This node's going to be super useful for repeating geometry and I feel like people are going to use that for all kinds of complex patterns. We can also click to see all the geometry nodes changes and as we can tell from having a look at it a lot of the changes are just performance improvements more than anything else. However another major point about geometry nodes is we have the named attribute nodes. So this allows people to store and access named attributes inside of geometry nodes just by their name. So the store named attribute node can create the attributes, the remove named attribute removes them, and the named attribute node lets you retrieve them for use. This will help you to keep your node groups a lot more tidy because you won't be kind of throwing these node links all over the place. But this is more for people that are already familiar with geometry nodes and this probably won't make much sense to anyone that hasn't touched it yet. So basically it's just handy and it will allow for more complex systems. Anyway, scrolling down on the main page, this is one that I am actually really excited about. Expand your asset library with collections. So basically you can now add collections as assets to your asset asset libraries. You can add them as instances or real objects. Thumbnails are automatically generated or you can customize it with your own thumbnail. So basically when you add a collection to the asset library now it's going to automatically generate a thumbnail for it and that is super super cool. It's going to be like fantastic for scene builders, environment artists, kit bashers, just like so many types of artists and yes especially in this case architectural visualization. This is brilliant. Love it. It's going to be so handy for people. Now a bit of a step down from the asset collections we have the curve pen tool for modeling which is great but it's like nowhere near as exciting. Quickly add, delete and tweak control points, hold modifier keys to switch handle types. So I haven't tried this but I imagine this is just like using the kind of pen tool for drawing vectors in 2D softwares like for graphics design and stuff. So I think people coming over from 2D pipelines over to 3D might actually really like this. But anyway moving on. So for grease pencil we have the envelope modifier. This new modifier connects all points that are n points apart a shape known as envelope. I don't know much about this because I'm not much of a first of all 2D artist and then second secondly grease pencil artist but I mean I think it looks cool so we can increase the spread length there and it's kind of like drawing these lines in between points it's kind of reminds me of how I doodle on paper like when I'm trying to pay attention to something I might be a bit attention deficit but I basically I draw lines like that all the time on my doodles it's completely unrelated but anyway if you want to learn more about it if you are a grease pencil fan you can click on see the manual and get the wiki page there for it so you can understand the different parameters but anyway there's more down here build modifier improvements improve smooth operator algorithm scale stroke thickness and pie menu new keep shape option in smooth modifier, dot dash modifier improvements, improve multi-user grease pencil performance and added cache to speed up object evaluation. That sounds cool. Basically I imagine if you're doing a lot of complex drawing with grease pencil you don't want to be held up by the performance starting to drain. I think that's why they've added a cache system here so that you can have many many different grease pencil strokes and objects on the screen at once and kind of access them quickly. I don't know I'm not an expert about this I imagine that's probably what it's about. Alright so strangely despite being a small update the video sequence editor has actually had some improvements. Now 
Now the video sequence editor, I mean, it's great in Blender, but it usually gets left kind of like at the bottom of the list. I mean, we are technically at the bottom of the list, so that well done, Curtis. No, but you know what I mean? It usually gets left out because it's the feature that not many people use or know about. Like no one really considers using Blender as a video editor. I mean, it's not just for doing like regular video editing. You can use this to kind of clip up and work on all your different shots in a Blend file. But anyway, they've been adding some improvements to it, which I think is great. So you can now organize your edits by giving channels names. So you can leave a note to yourself saying exactly what these channels do. You can also mute and lock entire channels. So basically, if you're worried about making accidental changes to them, you can now lock them or just disable them. So like if you've got a layer of music, but you don't want the music to interrupt your listening flow, then you can just play that back and then turn the music back on afterwards. So it's nice to have those extra features. So there are some extra features here as well. Add frame selected operator for preview, better handling of animation when transforming strips, option to limit timeline view height, use float for transformation offset, enable edge panning for transform operator, add filter method to strip transform, and create a new scene from the video sequence editor. All right, so those are all the major features for 3.2. There is some cool stuff in there, which I think you're probably going to like, but of course, it's not as much as previous versions. And I think they're very much aware of that. But hey, we can't always just keep moving up and up and up. I think there's a lot of groundwork that's been made here, and I'm actually quite happy that they're focusing on the performance side of things rather than just piling on new feature after new feature. To be smart with developing a system like this, I think you've got to be focusing on both ends of the spectrum there. But anyway, there are more things than what we've mentioned and you can have a look here at the bottom. We've got EV improvements and changes, library overrides, input and output, viewport, geometry nodes, animation rigging, core improvements, virtual reality, user interface, Python changes, and more. I'm getting a bit anxious looking at the Python section here. API breaking changes and deprecation. Oh dear. As an add-on developer, this is like the number one fear, wondering what tools have been broken by this new update. So I'm going to have to study that page. I won't do that now, but wish me luck. Anyway, of course, with every new update comes a new splash screen for Blender. And just like always, if you want to take a look at the splash screen, you can go and download the blend file and you can grab it for free. These are all free. This one is by Oksana Dobrovolska. I hope I said that right. I probably didn't. I almost always get names wrong. But anyway, you can click on them and check them out as well. I believe they're a Ukrainian artist, so you can always go and show your support. But it's beautiful artwork and yeah, I recommend checking it out. So yeah, hopefully this has enlightened you to the new features in Blender 3.2. I love doing these videos, bringing you up to scratch on the updates. Have fun with it. Let me know what your favorite new feature is and if there's anything else you'd like to see coming in the future. Future. The emoji for the end of this video is going to be a light bulb. And that's because we're reaching new lights, of course. So if you put that in the comments, I'll be able to see who made it this far through the video. That's just something we do on our channel. And of course, if you want to support my work, you can subscribe to my Patreon, join our Discord server, take a look at my products on Gumroad and Blender Market. You'll be able to find them on curtisholderonline slash store. There's free and paid stuff and we have new things coming for you very soon. So thanks for watching everyone. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.